The next thing I want to show you is how to add classes to Edpuzzle, and there are two options. Your first option is to just use edpuzzle.com, provide students with the link to Edpuzzle, and create your classes that way. So this would have students going directly to Edpuzzle. So from your main screen, you'll see here where it says My Classes, you would hit the plus sign. You could hit Create New Class. You could enter your class name. So I would say period two. I could put a description if I wanted to. You will pick your grade level and your subject. Now, the classic class type is the one that you get the most bang for your buck, and it gets you the most analytics from Edpuzzle. Once you've put this in, you will hit Create Class. Now, this one says it has no assignments. If I click in Class Members, the only person in there is me. And then Gradebook, since there are no members, that's not going to help me either. But what you'll notice right here is a class code. So when you create this account, what makes this a little more challenging is that students will need this class code in order to join your class. So they would go through the process just like you did. They would hit sign up. They would hit I'm a student, sign in with Google, and they would give them the option to input this class code. The trouble with this is if different teachers have different class codes, uh, the students might get confused as to which class to go to to find the information that they need. But if you're not using Schoology regularly, this would be the option for you. Now, if you decide that you don't want this class anymore, you hit the three little dots, you can hit delete class, it will give you the option, and it will go away. Now, the other option is to integrate this directly through Schoology. And the reason I use this in my classroom is because it just makes it so much easier for me because it also speaks to PowerSchool. So I would go through the same process and I would hit plus sign for my classes and then connect here to your learning management system. You'll see that Schoology is listed as an option. This process is a little bit more cumbersome if you have multiple courses, but in the end, it does make things easier. So you're going to click on Schoology. You're going to hit Set Up Edpuzzle. Now you're going to need these two codes, so keep this open, and then go to your Schoology courses. So I am going to... Oh, I forgot that I needed to share this tab as well. Okay, so I've opened the codes in another window because I need to use this tab to get to Schoology to show you how to add it. So you will go to your Schoology course and I'm going to put mine in my homeroom since I don't have it already in there. Uh, but the first thing you actually want to do is go to this little waffle right here and find the Edpuzzle app. So like I said, this is a little bit more cumbersome, but in the end, it will be easy. Luckily, it's one of the first ones. You are going to pick it, and then you're going to hit Install LTI. Um, you're agreeing that it's having connections to your course, and then you're going to pick the course that you want to add it to. So I'm going to just pick my grade six homeroom section. I pick course admins only, not sure why, um, but that seems like the choice that I need to make. Then I hit install, and then I go back to my courses. Pick homeroom. Now there's a lot of back and forth when you're doing this, and we tend to forget year to year what we want to do. So once you're in the course you want to add it to, you want to make sure that it's popped up down here. Now before you've gone through that waffle and clicked Add LTI, this wasn't here. But now that it's there, you know that you're good to go. So you're going to go into Course Options, and then you're going to External Tool Providers. From there, you want to pick Edpuzzle. And this is where we need the consumer key and the shared secret code that we found when we picked the plus sign to add a class. So I'm not sure why it auto generates my email and password, but I'm just going to delete those. Then I'm going to click off onto the other screen to get the shared secret key that was there when I picked 
set up Edpuzzle or connect my LMS. I'm gonna copy the consumer key and I'm gonna paste that into here. I will go back. I will copy the shared secret and then I will paste that into here. And then I will hit submit. So it now should be available for you in your course. And what's nice about this is it's going to speak directly to Edpuzzle. So when I want to go in here and add materials, I can click add materials and you'll see over here on the side is Edpuzzle. It's going to have this pop up for you to add materials. So ideally, once it loads, it will take you to your content page. It might ask you to create another class, um, but that shouldn't happen as long as you have uh, students and this is populated as a class in Schoology. So once I'm here, I can assign a video to my students. So I will play with my run-ons ones. I will pretend I'm going to play it and this option will come up. So this is telling me to open in Edpuzzle. I'm going to hit next. And then it gives me assignment options. So always turn on prevent skipping and this will prevent the students from skipping any questions that you have or skipping ahead in the video just to get to the questions. So it will force them to watch the entire video. Once I'm all set, I hit assign. And once you do that, you'll see here it is, but you're not done. So there's one crucial step in order to ensure that the students themselves can watch the video. You have to go over here to the gearbox, hit edit, and then pick enable grading. If you don't pick enable grading, the video will not show up for the students. Once I've done that, I can hit save changes. You can change the title. I like to put the date in front of all of my titles so that students know what day we completed an assignment. You can add a due date. If you put a due date, it will show up in their upcoming, ideally. It doesn't show up automatically on mine, but that's typically what you need to do but that step is crucial so i'm just going to delete this so my homeroom students don't freak out and say why do we have to do this ad puzzle but that is the best way to add uh, an ad puzzle to your schoology course now if you've got multiple sections this is something that you will need to do over and over again uh, with each section, you need to copy the consumer key and the shared secret uh, for each section that you have and make sure that you've added the app to the bottom of the page. But once you get it done, what's nice about it then is it shows up in your gradebook. So I can show you quickly. We did an ad puzzle today. And here it is right here. So I made it out of 10 points, uh, figurative language game show. And then uh, this is the percentage that they got. Um, typically I change it and have it worth the point value that it's out of. So if I were to change this to 26, that's how many questions were on it. Uh, they would get a score out of 26. So uh, that's just one way that makes it easier for you. And then you've got down here where you send it over to PowerSchool so that it goes in your gradebook if you use PowerSchool as your gradebook. I uh, hope this wasn't too confusing. confusing. If you have any questions, please put them in the comment section for this video. Thank you.